tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT This Morning. Now at 530, as bad weather moves into the bluegrass, slick roads may have played a part in an overnight crash. We'll have the latest. Also on WKYT This Morning, state police investigating how an argument led to a Knott County teenager being shot and killed. And two men suspected of shooting and killing a man in Lexington still on the loose this morning. These stories and breaking news as it happens coming up on WKYT. Good morning and welcome. It's good to have you with us. Hope you had a great weekend. I know uh, those who are Kentucky Wildcat fans did, and we are glad you're with us today. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Rebecca Smith. Yeah, looks like uh, Big Blue pulled it out. I certainly did. Uh, what, a, what a game. And uh, we'll continue to have stories about that this morning. Right now, this is a first alert severe weather day here at WKYT. We're tracking the possibility of strong storms this afternoon. Here's Micah. Yeah, it's a possibility. That's exactly the way to put it. And uh, first alert severe weather day just means, hey, we're we're getting you aware. We're keeping you updated and saying could see some strong, potentially severe storms later on. Now, we do have a few storms down toward the south. Wouldn't necessarily uh, call them strong, uh, but we are getting some pretty heavy downpours and also uh, looking at some lightning along within these. Columbia and work your way through, say, 127 there in northern Russell County. Southern Casey's getting in on the mix and also Pulaski County holding tight. This area right through here, heads up, you can get some pretty good rain out of this. And know a lot of us are needing it from going about over two weeks of actually seeing some of that rain. Strong to severe storms, that's going to be the focus of the forecast as we head throughout the afternoon. That's our main time frame. And I'll really break it down a little better than that hour by hour coming up in a few minutes. All right, we'll see you in just a bit. And we thank you. And as Micah said, we are looking at potentially severe weather patterns today. And bad weather may have played a role in a wreck that has happened overnight in Lexington. Yeah, it happened just before midnight on Old Todd's Road. WKYT's Sean Moody is live near the scene of that wreck to tell us exactly what happened. Good morning. Well, good morning. Investigators say they're looking into a few possible factors in the crash. They say speed may have been involved. Firefighters here on the scene also said wet roads may have played a role. The police say the crash happened just before midnight. They say a woman was driving outbound on Old Cross Road when she lost control and crashed into a tree. Accident investigators spent a couple of hours trying to piece things together. Old Todd's Road was shut down between Palumbo and Caden Lane until just before 2 o'clock this morning. Now, we haven't heard how the driver is doing at this hour. At the time of the crash, police said she was taken to UK Hospital with life threatening injuries. Live in Lexington, Sean Moody, WKYT. Well, Kentucky State Police still looking into a shooting that left a teenager dead at the Knott County Trail Ride. A little after midnight Sunday, a shot rang out at the annual fall Knott County Rail tra Trail Ride. Police arrested 21-year-old Miles Hamilton after they say he shot and killed 19-year-old Zachary Murphy of Floyd County. They both were told that they were attending the trail ride event when police say they started arguing. After police separated them, investigators say Hamilton got a gun, went back over to Murphy, shot and killed him. Other event goers say there could have been more police at the trail ride. They would be added. They'd be on foot where they could see and hear people, and, you know, maybe stop before it gets in, out of control, you know. We're told the victim's 20th birthday would have been tomorrow. Well, this morning, Lexington police are still on the hunt for two killers after a man was shot and killed in his own home this yeah, weekend. Police are telling us two men were involved in killing Darnell Bates in a home on Addy Alley. And WKYT's Mark Barber is live from the car wash where Bates worked before his death. Mark, good morning. Good morning, Bill and Rebecca. Many who worked with Darnell Bates here at Goo Goo Car Wash on North Limestone say the 36-year-old's death has left them angry and confused. Now, police tell us two men broke into Bates' home on Addy Street around 4.50 yesterday morning. Investigators say when Bates tried fighting back, they shot him in the back. We're told the armed men were wearing dark clothes and masks and were last seen running toward 5th Street and Broadway. Officers say they are still trying to figure out why the home invader shot and killed the father of two. Police tell us they are trying to get answers from Bates' friend and a cousin who were inside the home during the shooting. His co-workers believe the masked men were trying to take advantage of his hard work. Cat will he act? Go to work, five years, make good hard money like himself, you know. Don't come and take from a person that would give it to you. Now I'm told Bates was just promoted to general manager here at the car wash two weeks ago. They have set up a donation jar to take money that would benefit his 11-year-old daughter and to help cover his funeral costs. Live in Lexington, Mark Barber, WKYT. 
We're learning more about a fan who fell from the stands last night at Commonwealth Stadium. That fan, it turns out, is a former UK football player. University leaders tell us Brad Durham fell from the upper deck to the lower deck right before the end of the game. He was celebrating the win over South Carolina. Big Blue Nation is flooding social media with well wishes for Durham. You know, the Big Blue Nation is just one big family, and it showed today, it showed this morning. Obviously, this happened on Saturday, not last night. At last check, a family member said Durham was still in intensive care at UK. A University of South Carolina cheerleader is still recovering after a fall during Saturday's game. Cheerleader Lauren West was injured yeah, during the first quarter of the board. game. Emergency crews carried her away from the sidelines so, on a stretcher. South Carolina's <laughs> athletic department says crews did take West to the hospital as a precaution. Team physicians checked her out again on Sunday morning, saying that she did have a concussion. It's the second time this year a cheerleader has been injured during a UK football game. And an update to a story we first brought you Sunday morning. We now know the identity of a man who robbed another. Police say they have arrested Glenn Gary Adkins shortly after he robbed a man on Elm Tree Lane. It happened around 430 yesterday morning. Police were flagged down by the victim and then police say Adkins led them on a chase. A canine unit later recovered a gun that was thrown away during the chase. Adkins was charged with robbery and possession of a handgun by a felon. The funeral for a young boy stabbed to death in a Louisville park will be held today. 12-year-old Ray Etheridge died Tuesday at Cherokee Park. Police say 21-year-old Joseph Cameron stabbed him with a knife and then threw away the weapon. Etheridge lived with his mother and stepfather. We're told his family was homeless. On Sunday, his parents held a vigil ahead of his funeral. He would never hurt a, a fly, suffer a grown man to put his hands on my son and... I just don't understand. That little guy could have went a lot of places just on his personality. He's just one of those people that, you know, he had no problem talking to the next guy. You know, great, wonderful kid. Wonderful kid, so much potential. The funeral for Etheridge will be today at Scott Funeral Home in Jeffersonville. Our time is coming up on 537, and just this morning, a new search vessel arrived in the southern Indian Ocean to start once again looking for the missing Malaysian Airlines Flight 370. This new search could last 10 months to a year. It was suspended back in May so that search crews could regroup and sort through data. This time, crews have a new powerful tool, the most detailed map ever of the seabed in the area. They say it will help pinpoint where the plane may have gone down. A typhoon has made landfall on the coast of Japan, and it's wreaked havoc as it moves across the islands. There are worries now that a volcano that already killed dozens could lead to landslides. And three American servicemen were swept out to sea. Carter Evans has the latest on the typhoon. High surf slammed the coast of Japan as Typhoon Fan Phone dumped heavy rain and packed powerful winds of up to 90 miles an hour. Three American servicemen stationed at the Kadena Air Base on Okinawa were washed into the sea. One was found dead, the other two still missing. The shock evident on the base Facebook page. The typhoon is now heading directly toward Japan's most populous island, including the city of Tokyo. Heavy rain in advance of the storm cut short a Grand Prix race, but not before a crash that critically injured a French driver. Japanese authorities are concerned the torrential rain could cause landslides on Mount Ontake, where a volcano erupted without warning last week, killing at least 50. Rescuers have now been forced to suspend their search for 12 hikers still missing. As the typhoon tracks north, it's expected to weaken, then move out to sea, but not before dropping up to 16 inches of rain by Monday morning, with new concerns of power outages, flooding, and continued strong surf. Carter Evans, CBS News, Los Angeles. And the search for people missing in that volcano's eruption was suspended yesterday because of rain from the approaching typhoon. Well, with Election Day not even a month away, the Lexington mayoral race is heating up. Last night, WKYT hosted the mayoral debate between Anthony Beatty and incumbent Mayor Jim Gray. Our very own Bill Bryant served as the moderator. In addition to discussing the issue of homelessness in Lexington, both men discussed how they would work with law enforcement to combat crime. I know and understand that the folks who have the skill set uh, in law enforcement and other first responders can adequately deal with the problem if given the tools, the facilities. We've made more than half a billion dollars in investments in public safety. We have recruited and trained 165 
new police officers. To watch the entire debate, go to WKYT.com, click on the story about this issue. Good job, Bill, oh, moderating. I appreciate it, and a good discussion last night. After a one-year hiatus, Georgetown's Festival of the Horse is back. Stormy weather kept it from happening last year. This year, the cold weather nearly kept festival goers away again. More than 35,000 people attended the festival. Organizers hold a horse show every year to honor the event's namesake. Festival organizers say they are already planning next year's Festival of the Horse.